Hi everyone, welcome. This is Bibi Lorenzetti. Welcome to my channel. I am a yoga teacher, a birth doula, and a postpartum IU doula based in the Hudson Valley of New York. And today I am going to talk about uh, some techniques to help you through early labor and active labor. Uh, in my channel, you can find all kinds of things in yoga, nutrition, uh, yoga, both philosophy and asana. And then I'm starting to also offer some videos on uh, baby food and birth and postpartum uh, topics. So here I am with birth topic. <laughs> um, so I'm going to focus on three uh, things. One is explaining the three R's, Penny Simkin's three R's, which you might have heard of, uh, to go over just a few key comfort measures that will help you greatly if you're laboring at home with your partner uh, without a doula. And then uh, lastly, I want to um, go over some very basic uh, reboso techniques uh, and explain what a reboso is. Okay, so let's begin uh, by just quickly speaking about the three R's. These are rhythm, relaxation, and ritual. Okay, so rhythm being the most important thing. When a woman in labor, if you're I will speak directly to you, woman who's pregnant, because I'm assuming you're pregnant if you're watching this. So when you are in labor, uh, a good uh, measure of knowing whether you are coping well or not is if you can keep a rhythm, right? And a rhythm can be uh, can range anywhere from um, keeping some sort of movement, right? Some kind of swaying of the hips or of the chest, or a rhythm can be uh, chanting or repeating some words uh, in a in a specific pattern, right, that is rhythmic, or it can be some kind of sound like, ah, like sighing, right, that is rhythmical. Uh, so whatever it is that you're doing, it has a rhythmic pattern to it, uh, which leads me into ritual, uh, which is a repetition of whatever pattern of rhythm that you have established, right? So you pick a, a something that you want to be rhythmic with, and then you stick to that and you repeat it. And that is what helps you to cope. So if you find that leaning, for example, on your ball in this kind of manner and kind of swaying your chest from side to side is what comforts you, then your ritual is whenever a surge happens, you take your ball, you lean into it, and you sway right when the contraction is over you let go of the ritual and the rhythm you move around you take a sip of water and then when the next surge comes you go back into your ritual so that is kind of how you know that you are uh, coping well right and then you can continue to labor totally um without any problem right um sometimes especially during the last you know, during the, the active labor and coming closer towards uh, the birthing phase, it's hard for the woman to keep a rhythm by herself. It's easy to, to lose it, right? So it's important for the partner to, um, to help the woman, to help you uh, stay in a rhythm. So sometimes just your partner trying to engage eyes with you or your partner kind of guiding the rhythm of your breath, which we're going to cover in a second, um, right, with the hand or by tapping on you. So sometimes if you're not able to keep the rhythm, an external person, it being your partner or your doula, are going to be the one ones that are going to lock you back in to um, putting your attention in keeping a rhythm going. Uh, and then relaxation is a third R, which is being able to or, or remembering to relax, right? So as a, as a surge begins to happen, you go into your ritual with rhythm, you do your breathing, and you relax with the breath, right? You allow your body to release. You're not holding tension. So relaxing is very important. And sometimes you that's also where you need a partner of some sort, whether it's your partner or a doula, to be that reminder of relax. And that can be in the form of a touch to your shoulder or to your forehead or to a place that you've established in the body. And, um, and to continue to be reminded that your job is to relax. Um, so that's also going to ensure that you can continue on, right? Because if you're just tense, uh, your body arrives at a place where your nervous system can't handle it anymore. So it's important that you continue to maintain yourself in as much of a relaxed state as possible. So uh, rhythm, ritual, and relaxation. Okay. 
So now we're going to go into uh, pa- into three different patterns of, of breathing, uh, which also fall into the category of both ritual and rhythm, right? Because there are three patterns of breath that will help you uh, to cope with rhythm and to stay relaxed. So the first one is slow breathing. And I'm going to want you to practice with me. And I'm going to grab my phone. So we're going to do it for one minute um, so that you can experience what the one minute is. Um, So I want you to sit comfortably. And if at any point you get dizzy or you feel like you need to stop, please, by all means, this is your uh, prep practice. So let go of everything and just feel free to watch, especially if you're alone and you don't have someone there to to watch over you in case something happens. Uh, But these are very easy breath practices, um, nothing extreme extreme or uh, that requires any uh, experience in pranayama practices before this. So slow breathing is going to happen. You're going to inhale through the nose, have a little pause at the top, and then exhale through the mouth and just go limp. So you're inhaling through the nose, pausing for a second, exhaling through the mouth as you go limp and release all tension. Inhaling through the nose. We're not starting yet. I'm just going through it a few more times. So you remember inhaling through the nose, pausing a second at the top of the inhale, relaxing the body as you exhale through the mouth, right? Okay, so we're going to do that pattern for one minute. So go ahead and, and again, this is going to happen with your surges. So go ahead and um, you can do this reclined. You can do this on your birth ball like this. Uh, Ideally, you want to be able to, to, to breathe. So leaning forward is not so great, but you can use the ball and sit on it with your legs wide and have your partner kind of hold your shoulders. Um, So I'll do it here so so you can see that. Um, It's nice if, if, you know, the partner kind of rubs you when you exhale, um, your partner can kind of remind you to relax by kind of swiping his hand down, his or her hand down your arm, right? Okay, so take just a cleansing breath in, exhale through the mouth. And then the surge is going to begin. Follow my hand. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Go limp. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Go limp. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Go limp. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Go limp. Inhale. Pause at the top, exhale. Continue to follow my hand. And stop. Take a deep cleansing breath in and release it out through the mouth. And again, inhale, deep cleansing breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Okay. Take a sip of water, move around just like you would if you were actually in the process of this. Um, So a few pointers to think about is uh, when you go limp, when you relax, right? you want to think about your jaw relaxing. Your jaw is directly connected to your pelvic floor. So the more you can relax the jaw right, with the exhale, the more everything will release. Uh, and continue to expand as needed, right? So jaw and then also the shoulders. So if your partner, uh, this is something for partners to be watching, to watch out for, uh, to make sure you're not holding yourself from your jaw or keeping your shoulders up here, right? Trying to hold the pain. Uh, So when you're exhaling, really envision your whole body just going limp, relaxing, releasing. Um, So those are two things to think about. Okay, so that was slow breathing. Now we're going to go into light breathing. So light breathing is going to happen in and out through the mouth at a faster pattern. Um, And you're going to have a little pause at the top of the inhale, at the bottom of the exhale, just a tiny pause. And we're going to keep that pattern um, through for one minute and then do the same thing. Take a cleansing breath in, releasing it out. Now this, uh, both of these breaths are great for both uh, 
early labor and active labor, this faster one tends to be uh, more useful for during the active labor phase, um, just because it helps to flush out that lactic acid that accumulates whenever the uterus contracts. But it's really up to whatever feels right to you in the moment. Um, so same thing, go ahead and find a place where you can feel comfortable. If your partner is watching this with you, if they can step behind you and do the same thing, kind of hold your shoulders, allow for you to relax. You don't want to be tensely sitting. So I'm just going to show you real quick the pattern. You're going to go... <sighs> So you can follow my hand. So it's a light breath. You're not filling the lungs. You're not trying to belly breathe. It's just a very light breath, very shallow breath. Okay. And again, this is during your contraction. So you've moved around. You've had some water. Now your contraction is about to come again. If you're in active labor, you're not going to have much time to move around and, and drink water, but you want to make sure that you're drinking water throughout your labor time and that you're moving around, right? Whatever that, even if it's just lifting away from the ball and dancing with your partner or taking a little walk. Again, that helps to move the lactic acid and just shake it out and prepare you for something else. Okay, so take a deep breath in. Exhale, just let it out through your mouth. Again, deep breath in. Again, we're gonna breathe through the mouth only. Exhale, breathe it out. And then the surge is beginning. Follow my hand. Relax the jaw. You're doing great. Keep going just a few more seconds here. Remember through the mouth, relaxing as you breathe. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. A few breaths like that. So cleansing out. If you got a little dizzy, that's totally normal. Make sure that you're always having someone support you when you do this breath. Okay, take a sip of water, move around, resetting. Okay, so these are two very useful breaths for during uh, early labor and active labor. The last one we're gonna do is um, the he, he, who breath, right? And so the he, he part has an inhale and an exhale through the mouth. And the who part is just a long exhale where you relax and go limp. And it's going to go very fast. And generally, this is towards the end of your active labor. Um, and it's sometimes, you know, that transition phase. Um, so it's when, when the surges are really intense, uh, this will help you cope. And you can envision the <laughs> kind of this pattern, right? Like two little mountains and down. <laughs> That's the pattern. And you want to, again, remember to keep the jaw soft. You can let it hang, right? You're just breathing through the mouth, but in a very relaxed and it's more of the positioning of the tongue, right? So we're going to do this a minute again, right? So this gets you used to feel how long a minute is because that's how long your contractions are going to be once they um, stabilize uh, in active labor. Okay, so settle in. Take a few breaths. And again, watch my hand. If you have a partner, you can support, steady support so they're not, their attention is not taking away from the breath. And on comes the surge. Go limp. Go limp. Inhale, exhale. Keep 
keep going. Take a deep breath in and let it out through your mouth. Cleansing breath again, deep breath in. Let it out through your mouth. One more deep breath in. And let it out through your mouth. Move around, take a sip of water, do whatever you need. So these are the three breaths that uh, will help you cope. Right, And the important thing is that you're keeping that rhythm. You saw how each uh, breath pattern had a very specific rhythm to it. And you can have your partner kind of help you with the fingers. Um, and if they need a reminder, you'll watch this video over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're going to move into some uh, comfort measures. And I just want to take a moment to take out my ball stay, my, um, my pelvis here. Um, so that your, if your partner is watching, if not, you can refer this back to them. Um, I want uh, your partner to understand where the hands go, right? So of course there is uh, fat tissue on top of this, so it's not going to be uh, as easy to find, but you want to kind of point out where your ridges are. So if you feel your back, you should feel like two little dimples close to the center of your spine right about here. And then around those dimples, or where the back tends to dip in a little bit, there's two little ridges. If you dig in by holding your hip, you'll notice there's like a hard part, right? So that's your iliac crease. You want your partner or whoever is helping you to put their hand with the palm facing in, right? Like in this position, I'm going to face the front of the pelvis towards you. So the palm with their fingers are facing out towards the side of your hip, and the heel of the palm is facing in towards your spine, towards your sacrum. The thumb is facing up, right? So you want them to find where that uh, iliac crease is, and basically the thumb will touch where that area is, and the, and the palm will land right in the dip of your butt, right? There's sometimes there's like a little indent, indentation there, uh, or if you have very strong butt muscles, that's where the butt muscle will be the strongest. So um, that's where you want your partner to have the hands. And it'll look like, if you can see here, a butterfly shape around your um, sacrum area, right? I'm, I'm dipping in because obviously there's no tissue, but it would be like out here. So the thumb at the iliac crease, the palm on the buttocks, uh, and the fingers facing out to the side, right? And that's also comfortable for them because then they can engage their arms as they press. Because what we're going to look at right now is the double hip squeeze. So I'm going to use my ball as my, uh, my birthing person, right? And I'm going to envision, I'm going to take this uh, pelvis away, but I'm going to envision that um, the, the, the hip, the, pl the position that I just talked about is right here. Okay, so the, whenever the woman, whenever you are having a surge, that is when the partner wants to apply steady pressure, no movement, just steady pressure for the whole minute. So what you're going to do, partner, is you're going to press down and in for the double hip squeeze, right? So there's no, no surges happening, and all of a sudden, the surge begins. The partner's going to find his hand positions before the surge begins, and when the surge begins, they're going to press in and down. So this is kind of a rooting, and not only is the pressure, so the pressure is taking the attention away from the pain, right, where the pain is happening, so it's moving the location, uh, and it's it's widening the front of the pelvis, uh, and it's rooting the, the woman, rooting you down into the earth, right? There's a tendency when we experience pain to want to fleet, and the natural fleeting is upwards. Um, that is not helpful for, uh, for pain. We want to ground down and use the stability of the earth to take that, that shocking sensation downwards, right? So as the wave or the surge is happening, the, the, the uterus muscles are pulling down, right? So we want to go down with that energy. Um, 
So the partner is going to press down and in, and it's gonna, they're gonna hold the pressure steady for one whole minute. So partner, you are going to get a nice deltoid bicep tricep to work out. Um, so um, to not speak about lats. <laughs> so you wanna press in and down, okay? For the whole minute. Uh, that's one thing. Um, and then the other thing is in between surges, while the woman is relaxing and to help her uh, remember to relax, there's a few things that you can do. And my ball is definitely going to move, but I'm going to do my best. And yeah, there it goes. Hold on. So let's say the woman is standing or leaning forward, whatever situation, this is their back. Um, there's a few things you can do with your hands. You can go in an up and down movement on their back. Right? If the woman, um, if you, if the woman likes uh, just very gentle touch, then you can just have a very gentle touch. If the woman prefers firm pressure, then you can press your hands up and down their back, pressing with the heel of your palm. Or you can do a crisscross kind of massage, right? Where you're swiping your hands from the outside in towards the center. And you're going up and down and up and down. And then the surge comes and you press your palms in the, that position. Thumbs on the iliac crease, hands in the dimples of the buttocks. And you press in and down. And you hold for that whole minute. Then you release. And again, you do these nice uh, techniques. Another nice um, relaxation technique that you can do is you can take their arm and just press with I can't do it because I don't have two hands, but if this is their arm, you can kind of just press and press and press all the way down to their fingertips. So you're moving the energy again down, right? Um, so you can do that or you can take their feet and just press on their heels, right? Really firmly on their heels and off the sole of the foot. Another thing that's nice, especially if a woman is sitting on a ball, to uh, apply firm pressure on the knees. Right? So these are really nice things to do. Um, okay, another nice thing, which you can also do with the rebozo is, oops, usually it'll be um, whether if the woman is sitting or standing, um, you can take, shake the, it's called shake the tree. <laughs> uh, you frame the thigh of the woman with your hands and you shake it. This allows for um, the pain that's in the lower back, again, to move down. We're trying to move the pain down and out right so you shake the tree and this is very relaxing for the woman so this is something again that you can do all these movement things you want to do in between contractions in between surges during a surge you want to help them ground you want to help them feel steady because there's so much moving within them uh, they just need to be held okay now i'm going to move into just a few uh, reboso techniques so what is a reboso? A reboso is, this is actually not a reboso, uh, but I, I, mine is actually in my uh, birth bag, which is upstairs, um, and my baby is napping. So that is a very delicate time. You don't mess with that. So I'm, for those purposes, I am using a uh, wool scarf. But basically, a reboso is a very long um fabric uh, made in Mexico, originating in Mexico, and it's uh, woven by hand very tightly. And it's just very long. And so you wrap it around, uh, you use it to to support the, the woman's abdomen, uh, belly, and then after you've used it for like birthing techniques, you can use it to hang it over ceilings, over doors, um, to, for support measures. Um, but you can also use it to uh, wrap your belly and to hold your baby to like do you know the classical side swing or the wrapping of the baby on your chest um, so it has multiple uses so i definitely recommend investing in one okay so we're just going to do um two techniques today uh, that i feel are very useful for the woman and that it's it's nice to have as options at home so again this will you will need a partner for this um, it's going to be a little hard for me to do it with my ball moving around, but I'll do my best. So let's say that, again, um, the woman is, your, the, you birthing woman are this ball. Your hips are this ball. And for this first one, ideally, 
you want to be either in this position right here, right, in the knees, chest, chin position. And if that's too much, you can kind of have your head to the side. Or if that is still too much, you can be on all fours or you can be with your butt up and just leaning on a ball like this. Right? So you have a few options. The partner is going to take the reboso and is going to put it around your hips, around your butt. And then they're going to, you're going to pinch, you partner, are going to pinch the sides of the scarf right where it comes off of the of your wonderful partner and you are going to shake the hips from side to side and you can do it fast like a sifting or you can go slow right or you can alternate and again this is between surges unless the woman wants it during a surge but generally it's in between surges um, so side to side or sifting uh, so just to show you, so you have a visual of where it's going to go on the booty. So I'm going to be, it's going to go right underneath, right, the butt, and then all the way up to on top of that iliac crease that we were talking about. So it's going to cover the whole buttocks. Okay. And then the last one, which is going to be a little hard without a partner, but... I'm going to pretend that this is now your belly, right? So you're on all fours or in those other positions I talked about before and your partner is gonna wrap the rebozo. See how this is short? That's why rebozo is very long. Um, wrap the, the rebozo around your belly and then again, hold, this time it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be close to you, but because this is short, it looks like it has to be, uh, but it can just be up where they're comfortable. And again, find a comfortable position partner because you're gonna be here for a little bit. And again, you can uh, sway from side to side or you can sift. And what's nice here is that you can lift a little bit up. So that gives a break to the woman's back. And so again, you can sift or you can sway from side to side. Okay? This feels really, really, nice on on your on your belly um it'll this is one of my favorites um even in just my own birthing journey uh it was a favorite for sure uh, it just gives so much nice sensation and it feels like everything is shaking and moving on and out so i really recommend it as a cleansing practice in between surges that's all i have for you today i hope this has been useful uh this is a first a video I, I, I do on, um, you know, birthing techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed and I would love to hear from you. Uh, so please do feel free to comment and ask questions. If there's more things that you'd like to hear about, um, I would love to know so that I can put out there what it is that you need. Um, so a, a, an ongoing conversation is a wonderful way for me to, to continue to, to be there for you in a helpful way. Um, aside from that, uh, feel free to email me if you need. Uh, you can find my email and uh, a newsletter sign up on my website, bblorenzetti.com. Link is underneath. Uh, and my doula and postpartum uh, services, birth doula and postpartum services uh, on my uh, other website, birthwithbb.com, also underneath. And then lastly, uh, I, I ask you to please subscribe. This is the way that you can support me to be able to continue to support you back. Uh, so please do su subscribe and, and share with as many people as you, as you know. And if you're in the area, in the Hudson Valley area, feel free to reach out if you're looking for a doula. I would love to support you. Thank you for being here and enjoy the journey. It is so special and wonderful. I hope this has been helpful to you.